thank you for this excellent opportunity. It's not about branding of Akshay which I am talking to us. Akshay is an organization which is of Kerala, of the government. So this topic today is about enabling Akshay is empowering Kerala. It's more to the next slide. Kerala as you know uh, has got multiple uh, records which are not in concern with the rest of the states in India. Probably it's uh, uh, the records in, in terms of the literacy, in terms of the infant mortality, for the <coughs> female ratio to the male ratio, uh, in kind of the connectivity, etc. is much more in comparison with the Scandinavian nations, Europe, and some of the developed nations. So that we have to actually think today as to why our state, this state, I don't know if uh, this is uh, being uh, listened to by others as well, but Kerala as a state have suddenly been not one of those developed in the true terms uh, as it is existing in the rest of the world. Well, that off now and let us see how Akshay emerged. Next slide. Somewhere down, say around 10, 12 years back, the thought process was on as to how to empower the state using ICT, Information Communication Technology. Because the parameters of all the, how can the backwardness of the state be improved? How can our people who are living in foreign countries, we could communicate with them easily using the power of technology? And then emerged, it's a people's movement, I will put it like that. It's the visionaries who coined at that time, Akshay emerged to bridge the digital divide and say the next day. And in 2002, the state decided to do an e-literacy campaign to bring the power of information communication technology to the people. We had an honorable president at that time, Dr. APG Abdul Kalam, inaugurating on 18th November in 2002, the Asia State Project, which was to impart e-literacy to one person in every family of Kerala. One person in every family. You, the most backward state uh, district at that time, Malapuram, was selected as pilot. You can see in this picture, Honorable Writing Minister at that time, now also, Spinjali Kuti, Secretary Ms. Aruna Sundarajan, and there was a couple of other visionaries. Uh, Shiv Chandra was a collector, uh, Abdul Rahman Vandadani, who was the Jilla Panjaya president, and a couple of people who were actually coined and de designed this whole project. The aim was to train one person every family and make him yield its way. It was a simple uh, motive of empowering him. And it started off successfully with village level entrepreneurs being selected, the Panjaya presidents getting involved into the activity, and each village, uh, each, uh, each ward was, each ward member used to go around with the village level entrepreneur and find out and survey who are the people, who, which are the families who required to be made in trade. And then ELFC was connected with so the Punjab person and the members of the city were said, okay, this family illiterate, this war completely illiterate, this Punjab completely illiterate, block. And finally in 2005, the first district in the whole of India, Malapuram was declared completely illiterate, Kanu to follow suit. And today we have 35 black people, 35 Akshaya trained literally, 35 black families out of the 65 black families and we achieved this mammoth thought of actually making people feel it fail. Subsequently as things moved by <laughs> next evidence, as things moved by, we found that e-literacy was not a key thing because 8, 9, 10, people have started learning computers. So we had to innovate the requirement. Also at that time, the Paralimma scheme for having citizen service centers what is the citizen service centers we will be talking about and we will be knowing in this, that came to uh, be. And we switched our task to the requirement of the citizen at that time. 
to deliver G2C services, that means government to citizen services, business to citizen services, etc. etc. Next please. Aim was to bridge the digital, digital divide. How many of you go to an Akshaya center? May not be many. I don't go to an Akshaya center because I keep saying the same thing that I can do an online reservation of the railway ticket. But for those people who do not have this facility, computer facility, the printer facility, etc., no, internet facility, they can go to an Akshaya center. And that is exactly presented initially to impart education subsequently to those people who do not have the computer facility to carry out this simple job of you know the facility of ICT to do an online activity or whatever it is. So mission was to bridge the digital divide. Next. Our vision statement at that time in 2002 was simple gateway to opportunities. in Malayalam. It was coined in 2002 with simple e-literacy in mind, but then it expanded all the rates to visionaries at that time who coined this word and it is actually mushroomed into it's a huge opportunity today. Today Akshay is into so many activities. All of them I have listed quickly will run through. But then you would see how Akshay is actually taken ICT into each and every corners of Kerala today. Next. The specific objective of Akshaya is, let's say, mission, mission, bridging the digital divide. 100% e-literacy, delivery of government to citizen services, single window for all services, converge all services into one, so that the citizens don't have to go to multiple places. And then, be a friendly face of the government, empowering, through ICT certainly, and for all this to happen, our Akshaya entrepreneurs, who are military entrepreneurs, who are working on a public-private participation model, they are not being paid, they are getting their money through transactions, have to be self-sustainable. The sustainability is very important, they don't need the whole organization will run. And then, creation of ubiquitous network is very important. It has to be possible to deliver services everywhere only if, it can be possible to deliver services only if, it is, if, if, if we cover the entire state. And so, we need to create a ubiquitous network. We can't afford to have any gaps anywhere. This was the specific objective. Next, please. UID enrollment. Kerala, in Kerala, we are the largest enrollment agency. We do something like uh, 15 to 20,000 enrollments per day. We are doing it in the rural area. We have done almost 5 lakh enrollment as of now. We have a mandate, though we started around 8 months late, we have a mandate to finish it off the next year as per our Honorable Chief Minister's order. And uh, this is actually good. I wanted to ask uh, uh, Honorable. Uh, DGP uh, sometime back and how is going to UID going to help in this intelligence but probably uh, later we will have a chat on that. So this is this again a game changer. It's a force multiplier. Right? Bring in transparency, integrate and whole lot of things. We want to integrate this with uh, the e district which I have actually talked about that. That's also happening. Next. UID enrollment, it's also going at a very fast pace. E business I talked about, all sorts of bills can be paid through Akshay Centers today. Next. This is a kind of income. We have so many services. Next. What is the USP of Akshaya? It's with, first is the ubiquitous network. This will take some time. And then we, we need, I need to cover this very clearly. The ubiquitous network, we have that practically everywhere. When uh, the honorable finance minister said that we want to go completely online as for the commercial department discussion on the online filing of the tax, many people put up their hands up and said that, no, we don't have a computer, where do we go? He says, no problem. Go to the nearest access center and we will, you can do that. So we, he, in one stroke of order, he could actually do it only because we are ubiquitous. No other citizen service centers network in the whole of India is actually ubiquitous. And that is where, and so commercial tax department of Kerala is the only one which is complete, computerized. Next. Proactive citizen service. I want to explain this in a little bit. This is again our most important uh, thing. There are many government offices. Today you go to a KCB office to pay your bill. He has got a fixed rate. What is his fixed rate? Okay, he has been taken there to do a fixed amount of transaction because of the number of population base. Let's say it's 100. He is supposed to do 100 transactions. People go to him, he gives a bill. It is his compulsion. <coughs> If 50 goes to him, he's still happy. If 25 goes to him, he's happier. He can read a novel and read a newspaper also. But there's a difference when it comes to Akshay. 
The difference is that since it is not a transaction based model and it's not a PPP model, we get money for every transaction. So he is not open from 9 to 5, he is open from only 12 to 14 hours. He is available on a phone call and he makes it a point to give a pleasing way of doing the things. And instead of the 100 transactions which he is actually supposed to do in that one, if he is doing 120, 140, he is happy. And that makes it makes the whole service proactive. He is reaching out to the citizens. And that is what is making Akshaya different. That is what is empowering citizens. That is, that is making citizens' life easier, increasing the productivity and efficiency. That is our USP. Next. Government faced with a corporate heart. We are a government organization. But our entrepreneurs are really functioning in a corporate way, addressing to the requirements of every citizen. PPP model, public private participation model, not a single pie for the government. We created all these 2000 centers without spending a single pie from the government. All these entrepreneurs earn the income. And we are literally thinning out the government, making them more efficient. We're giving more proactive services to the citizens are getting higher by the day. And that is what we are achieving. Next. A win-win situation. Of course, for every citizen service, there is three people involved. The government who want to deliver the services, the citizens who are getting the services, and Akshaya, or the agency, or the intermediate agency. So it's a game for everyone. The government is getting more satisfaction, the citizens are getting more satisfaction, Akshaya and the income as well. This is a topic we have uh, examples from all these people. The other day I got a letter from, uh, from the pro-wise cancer, how uh, we literally transformed the way we have congratulated from the UAD enrollment team. Uh, and, uh, we are the best enrollment agency out of the 230 enrollment agencies in, in India, from, uh, which is uh, headed by Mercurial uh, 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 Dr. Nandanil Devi. And uh, out of the 230 enrollment agencies like Vipro and all, our share with 92.3% is the most highly rated as far as quality is concerned and against the national average of 80. So, and many other, many other things. Next please. This is how I put this, how the USP really works as far as Akshay is concerned. Better service delivery, citizens confidence and then greater acceptance on the land of the clockwise. Uh, and then we have more footfall from the citizens. Okay, we have increased revenue, motivates the entrepreneur to perform even more. And the government is very happy, the system service delivery is much better. More number of services he gives. I am getting so many departments to deliver services and then increase revenue. So it's, it's a constantly increasing cycle, literally empowering both the government and the citizens and increasing efficiency. Next please. Uh, see, uh, recently uh, uh, our, uh, the skill development chairman, vice chairman, uh, of Ramadurai uh, is also the uh, chairman of vice chairman of TCS, uh, has been appointed by the um, Prime Minister in a statement. 70% of all training, including carpentry and plumbing, can be delivered online. And it's only 70 for medical transplant, it will be 90%. No, as it. So the, the difference is that if you develop content, even if this college is developed or anybody wants to develop content. We can deliver to every nook and corner of Kerala, every nook and corner of the states. It's really empowering and educating uh, the citizens. So, uh, our next line of argument, we have talked about e-governance, we talked about e-learning, we talked about e-business. The next we want to get in is telemedicine. Telemedicine, we are next. We want to be business correspondent. We tied up with State Bank of India to be the business correspondent. So all all of our Akshay centers will uh, 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 will work as mini uh, uh, banks where you can deposit money, take loans, etc., etc. So uh, we have you know best of banks have got just 500 branches. But imagine taking the remote response of BDP, why not Kasaragod, etc. We have no problem here. So again, I was talking to. It is actually for the people who are uh, digit, uh, who are not so empowered uh, from the computer perspective and they are the ones who really benefit from all of this. Next, e-learning, we want to be the highest, even bigger partner with 
from 2005, we want to take it to 10,000 students for IGNO and we want to start many more courses and many more focus, uh, job oriented courses for medical transition to much more. Next. E business, practically everything should be a one stop shop for everything. So we want to get everybody to go, uh, and many of my access centers have started doing as, 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 as of now more and more services uh, in e business. Next. Complete UID enrollment. The national target is 2014. We want to complete it in practically one year's time. By the middle of next year, we will complete UID enrollment in the state. Next, e-governance. We want. I have a slide for you. Next. Uh, interestingly, our model has been uh, well accepted, public, tested, and success, most successful model nationally and proper health internationally. Many, many, many awards have been won. We've been tasked with setting up a similar facility in, in uh, Union Territory of Lashadi, probably in other states too. We'll be able to set it up next. Future plan for e-governance. I've talked about, you know, 14 districts are there. In two districts, we have piloted e-districts. And with just 23 services, we want to build that to 100 services. So when you see, as of now, we 23 services in two districts, just probably 10%. We want in the next one year we want to call the whole state. And this is what we plan. You know, we, you can see uh, first is the 23 service of the revenue department, another 30 more would come, then the motor vehicle department, agriculture department, passport. Every service will be electronic service delivery. If the shared certificates, the banking, everything can this can also go. If you avoid duplication, avoid impersonation, it faster delivery, increase in transparency and it may efficiently. And this is how we are going to go. It is going to happen. It's, the plan is, the roadmap is already on. Let's hope it will happen. And that is the best news for all of you. Next. Thank you. I hope I have been able to convey something to you.